Welcome to the top 10 most pulled comic books for November 20th, 2024. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you love daily comic book content and you think you might like me helping you make decisions on what comic books to buy, you know, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. Yes, guys, this is the video series where each week I share with you the most popular comic books that are getting pulled based off of the League of Comic Geeks.com. Now, this is not definitive sales numbers. These are the comic books that people are pulling for this particular comic book week. If you guys want to check out League of Comic Geeks, uh, go ahead and do it. I'll leave it in the description box below. It's absolutely for free, and you can create a pull list of your own. So we always start with those books that are on the outside looking in, five of them to be in fact, and the first one is Geiger. This is issue eight, 32 pages for the price of $4. This book does have 3,510 pulls. This book should be higher on the list. More people should be putting this book on the poll list. It's a very entertaining read. It's written by Jeff Johns and the art is done by Paul Pelletier. This is not your normal artist on here, which is Gary Frank. He could be doing a story arc here uh, so Gary Frank can put out more issues. But this is a great story of a man who has radioactive powers and he's trying to find a cure for himself. And he also has a few sidekicks with him by the name of the two-headed dog Barney and Nate the Nuclear Knight. It's a lot of fun. I will always recommend this book. Great stuff here. Are you guys reading Geiger? And if not, what are you waiting for? Our second book that's on the outside looking in goes to Phoenix. This is issue five. This is a 32 page comic for the price of $4. This book has 3,530 pulls. This has more pulls than Geiger. Like, come on, man. Is it just because it's Phoenix? Is it Jean Grey? This one is written by Stephanie Phillips and the art is done by Alessandro Morocco. Um, I read the first two issues, two, excuse me, two issues of this comic book. It wasn't anything spectacular for me. I didn't like, you know, the enemy in the book. I didn't find that it was very exciting. And I just don't know how long they could go on with this book. So I wound up dropping it. However, if you do like this book, that's pretty awesome. I personally think, though, Geiger should be higher. So our third book that's on the outside looking in goes to the Department of Truth. This is issue 27. It's a 32 page comic for the price of $4. This has 3,895 pulls. It's written by James Heine in the fourth and the art is done by Allison Sampson. Um, interesting cover here. Looks like the president took it up with Marilyn Monroe. Uh, I seem like It seems like this book is starting to dip a little bit maybe for people, not as many pulls as it once was. So if you guys are still reading of the Department of Truth, let me know in the comments below and let me know if you're also enjoying it at this point. Our fourth book that's on the outside looking in goes to Catwoman issue 70, 32 pages for the price of $4. This book has 3,919 pulls written by uh, Torin Grumbeck and the art is done by Fabiano Mascolo. Uh, when it comes to this book, it looks like Catwoman has a bounty on her head and it looks like she's going to be running to Berlin to get away, going under, you know, disguise and, and, you know, and being invaded from being captured. I have not read this book and I couldn't tell you how long. So hopefully you guys are enjoying Catwoman as of right now. And uh, if you are, again, like I've always said, let me know in the comments below. And our final book that's on the outside looking in goes to Batman and Robin, year one. This is issue two. It's a 32-page comic for the price of $4. This book does go over that 4,000 mark, and it has 4,313 pulls. Now, the Batman and Robin year one story is a lot of fun. Uh, it is written by Mark Wade, and the art is done by Chris Sandy. Uh, but this is a story about Dick Grayson, you know, obviously teaming up with Bruce Wayne. And this is the beginning stages of that, the, the year one adventures, you know, them adjusting to each other, which I think is going to make for a great 
um, story here, right? I really enjoyed the first issue and I'm looking forward to the follow-up issue here. And uh, yes, there's a lot of Batman stuff right now, but when isn't there a lot of Batman, right? So I'm looking forward to this one. And I, again, I love Sam Nee's artwork. So now we officially kick off that top 10. And number 10 goes to Exceptional X-Men. This is issue three. 32 pages for the price of $4. This book does have 4,875 pulls. We did make quite a jump from the last cu past couple of comics. It's written by Eve L. Ewing and the art is done by Carmen Carnero. Um, the first issues were all right. It's it's basically centered around Kitty Pride, uh, and then we got introduced to a few different mutants in this comic book, um, like um, Axo, Bronze, and Melee. And it looks like I guess these guys are going to be a team, and probably Kitty Pride is going to lead them. And obviously Emma Frost is going to have her say in everything. Um, do we need all these new mutants that are been introduced into uh, into the the mutant universe at this point? Right? It's like we have so many as there is, and now we're getting all these new ones. Uh, why can't we just write good comics with the ones that we currently have? Right? So yeah, I'm a little frustrated with that, but I do like the way Kitty Pride is written in here. So we'll see what this issue has to offer. Grabbing onto that number nine spot, we have the Immortal Thor. This is issue 17, legacy numbering, 778. 28 pages, $5. This book has 5,133 pulls, written by Al Ewing, and the art is done by Jan Basil Dua. Yes, so when it comes to Thor in this issue, it looks like Thor is going to be doing battle against four separate foes. He's going to be facing the Man of Fire, the Man of Stone, a Beast of Wrath, and a Trickster Serpent. So they all have this hate for Thor. Can Thor overcome the odds? I'm sure he will, <laughs> right? Um not a fan of this book. I haven't read it in a while. I think since issue two or three. I think it has to do with Al Ewing's writing. There's certain books I like from him, but there's a lot of books I don't like from him. So, and Thor was just one of them. But like I say all the time, if you guys are enjoying it, absolutely fine. Coming in at number eight, we have Daredevil. This is issue 15, legacy numbering 677, 32 pages, $5.00. This book has 5,335 pulls, written by Saladin Ahmed, and the art is done by Luigi Segaria. Hey, my name is Luigi, huh? So, cool stuff there, I guess, right? I guess if you're a Daredevil fan, you're enjoying this story. It looks like Matt Murdock is still dealing with these uh, demonic entities, and it looks like one of these entities is attaching to someone that obviously he cares about. Who is that person? I have no idea. I couldn't tell you because I don't read the series, but we're still dealing with that demonic stuff from the very beginning of this series. And that's when I read it. So still going on strong. If you're liking it, that's pretty awesome. Again, let me know in the comments below. I think this book has dropped a little bit and coming in at number seven goes to Wolverine, this is issue three, legacy numbering 395. This book is 28 pages for the price of $5. This book has 5,664 pulls. Another book written by Solid Ahmed. The art is done by uh, Martin Kukulo, who has pretty good artwork in the book. Uh, but the last issue was just, it was kind of weird as we dealt with Wolverine battling this Wendigo and it was a young one and it wasn't matured and he couldn't let it have flesh and he was going after it and it's kind of like a story I definitely would not expect it like took a left turn from what happened after the first issue right so I am going to stick with this to see the direction of it but uh I am kind of you know getting hesitant already after two issues of it. Did you guys drop this book? Let me know. Grabbing on to that number six spot, we have Titans. This is issue 17. 
32 pages for the price of $4. This book has uh, 5,732 pulls. It's written by John Lehman, and the art is done by Pete Woods. When it comes to the all-in issue, issue 16, I thought it was a pretty good jumping on points as there are changes to the team. No longer is Nightwing the leader. He's passed on that leadership to Donna Troy. And right away, what happens in the comic, there's something that happens and he's like, yeah, Donna, what are you going to do? You're like the leader now, right? And what happens is the Titans are kind of reliving their most horrific and traumatic events that they've experienced again and again and again. So how do they overcome that? I don't know. We'll see in issue 17. I like the first the issue 16, so we'll see the direction it goes. Getting closer to number one, but we're at number five, and we have Miles Morales, Spider-Man. This is issue 26, legacy numbering 308, 32 pages for the price of $4. This book does have 6,028 pulls. I thought it would be more for a top five book. Written by Cody Ziegler, who's done a fine job on the series, and the art is done by Federico Vincentini, who also does a wonderful job in the artwork, and we're still seeing miles uh dealing with the whole vampire stuff after the event right can he be cured of the vampirism right we've seen dr strange try to help him hasn't quite worked can we get to see black panther give him a new suit in the last issue so he's going to see if that works and now he's going to be doing a little bit more uh, another battle against the vulture the one thing that Cody Ziegler tends to do with this series, he kind of tends to be a little bit repetitive, which can be a drag at times. But overall, it's been a great series. Love seeing Miles Morales' journey. Top four. Number four. Wonder Woman, issue 15. Still holding strong, boy. Legacy numbering 815. 40 pages, $5. This book does have 6000 329 polls written by Tom King and the art which is gorgeous in the series done by Daniel Sampery. It is a gorgeous looking book um, and it looks like Wonder Woman is still dealing with the Sovereign after all this time, right? And Tom King tends to write story arcs that last a long time and then when you include an event in it it's going to last even longer i was very hot and cold on this series so i just decided to stay away from it if i read it in the future in a trade or something maybe i'll do that but i just always would give it a chance and it would be good in one issue wouldn't be good for me in the next issue so just staying away for right now number three Action Comics, issue 1076. You guys are holding strong on this weekly series. 40 pages for the price of $5. This book has 8,000. 823 polls. It's written by Mark Wade and the art is done by Clayton Henry. And we're still dealing with Superman trying to get out of the Phantom Zone. And it looks like that maybe he's, it says here, let me see, let me read it. It says, Escape from Krypton. Superman has uncovered the secrets of the Phantom Zone from the clutches of his own father, Jarrell. So how does he return home? I don't know. You have to read it and see. So this is, I'm very curious. Are you guys really vested in this action comic series? Do you find it enjoyable? Do you like it better than other titles to the point where it is worth a weekly read? I want to know all that stuff in the comments below. Coming in at number two, and this book is holding strong after 33 issues. We have Batman and Superman, World's Finest. 32 pages for the price of $4. This book has 9,098 pulls. Once again, written by Mark Wade and Andrea uh, Golatires is the artist on there. Honestly, guys, what would happen if Mark Wade left? I know there's a lot of people that are kind of not fans of Mark Wade, but he does write a lot of fine comic books when it comes to DC. Uh, would you be okay with him leaving? I want to know that in the comments below. But this book is holding strong as it does have to deal with uh, Eclipso's Reign of Terror. Uh, and it looks like... Um, Maybe the Justice League are on the brink of a civil war. Now, I have not read this book in a while just because of it all started with the whole Batmite thing. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get back on it. And I just never did. So am I missing out? Again, always let me know 
in those comments. So remember guys, after number one, we are not done as I have to discuss Slayer's sleeper pick. That's right, the book where maybe you guys forgot that is coming out that I might wanna let you know to pick up. So before we get to that though, of course we have that number one pick and it goes to Ultimate Spider-Man. This is issue 11. Is there no doubt that this book is on top of everyone's poll list, right? This one is 32 pages, $5. This book has and destroys every other book out there this week. 17,100 and 25 pulls. It's right up there with the regular Batman series. It's done by Marco Cicchetto, uh, and it also has Jonathan Hickman as the writer. I'm sorry, the artwork in this particular issue, though, is going to be David Messina, so it's not done by Cicchetto. Cicchetto just does the cover art, but the big thing is we're going to get introduced to black cat in this world so that's going to be interesting obviously she's going to have a vendetta against harry and and peter for what they did to her you know her father and are they going to develop a relationship how old is she is mary jane going to be jealous like i want to know all that stuff in the comments below what you're anticipating out of this issue of ultimate spider-man and the black cat character and now it's time for Spider Slayer's Sleeper Pick, and this book ranks 29th on top 10 most pulled comics for November 20th. And this is Daniel Warren Johnson's The Moon is Following Us, issue three. You guys gotta read this book. It's so well done, as we have a mother and father fighting for their daughter's life who is stuck in this dreamscape world. And the world that they're in is absolutely awesome. It's created by their daughter's mind, right? And they go back and forth between real, uh, between reality and this dreamscape world. The art is also done by Riley Rosmo. So again, Daniel Warren Johnson and Rosmo share art duties and it's a great story. If you love Daniel Warren Johnson's storytelling and you like lots of emotion, I definitely say pick this book up, guys. This book has 2,136 pulls, which is pretty good, but not compared to the other books that we talked about. So make sure you pick this book up guys you're not going to be disappointed when you read it and there you have it webheads hopefully you enjoyed this week's episode of top 10 most pulled comics for november 20th 2024 i'm going to leave you more content right here for you to click on in fact this is after the poll where i cover the rest of the comic books i talked about for the current comic book week and as always guys remember support those local comic shops keep buying keep collecting but always read your comics so we can have great comic conversation and guys i will see you on new comic book day. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. Bye.